Welcome back to Catalan Soccer guys, I'm Catalan Ben and today's another tactical video taking you through player profiles. Today we're going to be looking at midfielders and how to teach coaches and kids to play specific roles in your midfield. Let's do it. Okay, so first of all, we are going to look at central defensive midfielders. Now, central defensive midfielders, as the name suggests, they tend to play in central areas and the defensive areas of your midfield. So they still play in the midfield third, but we are looking as a defensive midfielder to try and support behind the ball and first of all, protect your centre backs. So we're going to look here in this video at how your central defensive midfielder will play in and out of possession. So a CDM should be trying to support behind the ball, they should be available for passes and they should always be trying to support by being slightly behind the ball and not in front. If a CDM finds themselves in front of the ball and we lose possession, we are then very at risk of being counter-attacked. So a CDM is always trying to play behind the ball in central areas to protect and offer cover as well as support for the ball. Now, when in possession of the ball, a CDM should be trying to play forward, should be trying to play into wide areas and should be most importantly trying to keep possession. A CDM plays very safe passes. So if you're playing CDM, you should be trying to play low risk passes to your teammates. Those low risk passes are more likely to find their target, are less likely to be intercepted and are going to go to players who have a low risk of losing the ball, either by being marked or being in difficult positions to receive. A CDM, when in possession, should be looking to try and complete passes with a high degree of accuracy. So don't play the risky balls, don't play balls that go over the top and into big open areas for players to run onto. Try and play passes to your teammates' feet and that you are really, really likely to complete those passes. Often playing the ball back to your centre-back is an easy option, but if you want to be a little bit more adventurous and creative than that, try and find your full-backs or your central midfielder and out of possession, your CDM should always try and protect your centre-backs. So whether you're playing with two or three centre-backs, as a CDM, you should be trying to occupy the space in front of them, usually around where the midfield third starts. So when we protect those centre-backs, we play in a central area, and that means that if we lose the ball, people have got to get past you before they can attack your centre-backs. That gives us that extra line of cover and it makes it less likely for counter-attacks to go straight through your team. So like we talked about earlier, a CDM, even when you've got the ball, will play behind the ball to support and cover. And that means that when we are quickly out of possession, the transition that happens from a defence to an attack means that that attack doesn't catch us out. They don't get in behind us quickly and we don't get dragged out of position. We occupy the area in front of your centre-backs. And as a CDM, we should be trying to link with other central players. So trying to look for a central attacking midfielder, your other centre mids or your centre backs. If you are in trouble and you can't play into an easy pass that you're highly likely to complete in a central area, that's when you can start to look wide. So spread the ball out to the left wing or the right wing and try and find your full backs if needed. As a CDM, like we talked about, you're often going to link with your centre-backs, usually because these are safe passes that are going to complete easy and we're not going to risk possession too much. So the next midfielder we're going to look at is the central midfielder. Now, this is slightly different to a CDM because we don't play as defensive a role and we go slightly further forward. As a central midfielder, you are the link between your entire team. So this is one of the most difficult roles to play, but also one of the most rewarding and one of the best in terms of excitement and action and number of touches on the ball. So lots of people like playing centre mid, but lots of people don't. It takes a lot of running and a lot of hard work, but if you put in that hard work, you definitely get the reward. Some of the best players in the world right now are central midfield players and some of the most creative and some of the ones that get the most assists come from central areas because the centre mid is a really important role in your team. So what kind of areas does a centre mid play? Now, centre is very important to think about because the centre circle is usually your domain as a central midfielder. So whenever you've got the ball, you should be looking somewhere in the centre circle as one of your main positions to be. When you lose the ball, we should always be trying to get back to at least within the centre circle to protect the players behind you and your goal. As a central midfielder, we don't want to get dragged out wide near the touch lines. Not only does that leave big gaps in between us and our teammates, but it also leaves open spaces for players to run through and the ball to go through if there's a transition 
and we lose the ball. So try and always maintain that central area of the pitch and try not to get dragged out towards the touchlines. It may sound basic and simple, but central midfielders should not take throw-ins. So unless it's a very quick throw-in and you're the nearest one to the ball and you're trying to get a counter-attack started or keep an attack moving, as a general rule, you shouldn't take throw-ins. Let the ball go to either a fullback, a winger, or maybe just another midfielder who's playing a little bit wider than you are. But as a centre mid, try not to be taking the throw-ins. If you give the ball away at a throw-in and you're out on the touchline, that means there is a big gap where you should be. Now, in possession, a central midfielder, like we said, is trying to link everybody to everybody else. Just have a look at all the triangles that can be completed by a central midfielder on this graphic here. So we've got the fullbacks, the centre-backs, the CDM, the cam, the striker, the wingers, even the goalkeeper. Everybody will link to your centre mid at some point. It's important that you've got good vision and good awareness around you. So when you've got the ball, you need to know where people are, you need to know where you are in relation to them, and you need to know where your next pass is going to go as quickly as you can. Now, whilst we said that a central midfielder is a great position to play, it can be very difficult to be there. Often a central midfielder has got a lot of players around him. He's got pressure and not much time on the ball, and he doesn't usually get many touches before someone is trying to tackle, put him under pressure, or intercept his passes. So you've got to play with a very small number of touches. You've got to move the ball on quickly, and don't get caught dribbling too much in the centre of the pitch. Out of possession, a central midfielder has got to reset to that centre of the pitch. They've got to get back behind the ball, and they've got to remember their defensive responsibilities as much as their attacking responsibilities. We said at the beginning that a central midfielder has got to run a lot, and this is why. A centre midfielder will sometimes go support a striker, he might go take a corner, he might just go get involved in any kind of set piece or attack. As soon as we lose the ball, we basically become another defender, we get back behind the ball quickly, we recover, and we make sure that we are protecting the players behind us and our goal. Which is why a central midfield is such a hard position to play. It takes a lot of running, it takes a lot of hard work, and it takes a good awareness of what's going on around you. Okay, so the next midfielder that we're going to look at is your wide midfielders, your left mid and your right mid. Now, these players play the opposite of a central midfielder. They don't play down this middle third. They try and play it out wide, either by the right wing or the left wing, out on the touchlines, similar to a fullback, keeping the width and try and maintain as much space as possible. So the areas that they're playing is still defensive when we lose the ball, still attacking when we win the ball, but most importantly, we're playing in wide areas to maintain width and space. Try not to get caught out too much in the middle of the pitch if you're a left or a right midfielder because if you're in the middle, you are taking up other players' space, you are destroying space when your team gets the ball and you're making the pitch smaller and we want to make the pitch as big as possible. Now, in possession, a left and right midfielder, or we'll call them a wide midfielder for now, those wide midfielders should always be looking to create chances for their teammates. So a wide midfielder will often provide crosses, they'll play through balls, they'll make attacking runs in behind fullbacks of the opposing team and will try as much as possible to keep attacks moving and going forward. In possession, if you can't create a chance to go forward or if it's just a bit too crowded in the area that you're playing, be aware of what's going on on the opposite side of the pitch. So a right midfielder always needs to know if there's space on the left-hand side of the pitch, and vice versa. Your left midfielder needs to know what's going on on the right. The reason for this is if we receive the ball on the right and it's crowded, there's probably space on the left. If we can't go forward on the right, we will look to either switch the player with one big long pass from left to right, or we will play to a player who has got a better situation around him or an easier position to switch the ball for us. So it might be a centre mid, a CDM, a centre back, maybe even a full back. But playing to another player who's slightly behind the ball might help them find the switch if we can't find it ourselves. And one of the most important passes to play as a wide midfielder is the 1-2. Try and bounce the ball off your central midfielders, bounce the ball off a striker, or bounce the ball for a 1-2 off a fullback. By doing this, we can release the ball in behind fullbacks, we can get into good attacking areas, and we can take players out of the game. So the 1-2 is your favourite pass as a winger. Now, out of possession, we need to lose a little bit of that width. Not all of it. We don't want to collapse completely and just become another central midfielder. But we do need to understand the channels that we're playing in. We are trying to make sure that when we lose the ball, we come away from the touchlines and we become more of a central player to help close the gaps between us and our teammates. 
When we close those gaps, it makes it more difficult to play through us and it makes it more likely that we will intercept passes or break up the opposition's attack. So remember, when you lose the ball, you drop, you get behind the ball just like any other central midfielder would and you make sure that you close the gap between you and your centre mids. It's also important to be aware of the gap between yourself and your fullback. So if you're playing in front of a left back or a right back, it's important that we close the gap by making recovery runs, drop back and keep that gap as small as you can to make sure that if other players are trying to play between you, it's easy for you or the fullback to press the ball and win it back. If we leave huge gaps between ourselves and our fullbacks, that's great areas for the opposition's left and right midfielders to play in, or a winger, or even a centre mid to try and occupy. So make sure those gaps aren't too big. And finally, the link that can really cause problems for the team is the link with your striker. So the link to your striker is usually a dangerous one for the other team because any link pass that you're playing to your striker will be a through ball, it might be a cross, it might be a pullback, but all those kind of passes create goal scoring chances. So keep your eye out for where your striker is, try and know where your striker is before you receive the ball and then that gives a better chance of creating a goal scoring opportunity with either your first touch or within a couple of touches and a through ball or a cross can really be a problem for the other team. So there you have it guys, that's wide midfield play for you and how to play in those positions and where to play. The next one we're going to look at is my favourite position and the position that I play most often. That's the CAM, the C-A-M, that stands for Central Attacking Midfielder. Now a central attacking midfielder still plays down that central third of the pitch, just like a CM or a CDM. But the cam plays closer to your striker. They play higher up the pitch, closer to the final third. They have less responsibility to do defensive jobs. They have more responsibility to make attacking runs, to make attacking passes, and to keep the attack building forwards. Just like we mentioned earlier, we still don't want to be too wide as a cam because cams are always trying to link the play through the middle of the pitch. So don't get yourself caught out near the touchlines. If you're playing as a cam, try and maintain and dominate those central areas. When in possession, cams should be trying to score from range. So if you look at a player like Kevin De Bruyne and the number of shots he takes and assists that he gets from shots that are created by himself and taken from outside the area, then that tells you just how often you should be trying to pull the trigger as a cam. You aren't just the midfielder, you are also part of your attack, which is why central attacking midfielder is so important. You are part of your attack with through balls, with chance creation, but also with shots. Pull the trigger, don't be scared, and hit your shots. As a cam, we should also be trying to be creative with how we pass. We should play through balls, we should play chip passes, we should play scoop passes, and we're trying to be creative with how we create chances for our strikers. So don't just play a normal straight pass every time. Don't just always play the same pass. Try and disguise your passes. Try and play into areas of the pitch that you think are going to cause the defenders trouble. Try and play over or behind defenders to make them turn and run towards their own goal. And most importantly, try and play passes that will create a chance for your striker to score, ideally with their first touch. If you play the good through ball and they can hit it with their first touch, it gives keepers less chance to react, it makes it harder to defend and gives us a higher chance of scoring. So the better your pass, the better the chances you will create. And finally, your link players. As a cam, your link players are often other midfielders. So your first port of call is to try and find another midfielder either to keep possession or to create a chance. That might be your wide midfielders, it might be your fullbacks overlapping your wide midfielders, or it might just be another centre mid to help keep possession. But one of the most important links as a cam is your striker. Can you create a chance? Can you play a through ball? Can you put him in a good position to score? Can you play a one-two off him and get ahead of him to try and score for yourself? Don't forget how important the link is to your striker. Don't let your strikers get isolated. Don't drop too deep and play really far behind your striker, making it difficult to link up with them and allowing players to play between you. Try and make sure you keep a nice close gap between you and your striker when you get the ball because that link is one of the most important on the pitch. So there we have it guys, there's all the link plays too for your cam and that is your midfield session. So your midfielders are very important to the entire game, they have to attack and they have to defend and you'll often find that the team that controls the midfield and has the hardest working midfield often wins the game. It's very rare that a team with a poor midfield who don't work hard and don't create chances will still win matches. So if you're a midfielder, your manager's telling you you've got one of the most important jobs on the pitch. Thanks for watching guys, a little bit of trivia for you. Does anybody recognize where this mug's from? This is one of my favorite TV shows. Let me know in the comments if you know where this mug's from. 
Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you all in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done already, and I will see you in the next one.